So for these lovely chocolate ginger cookies, I've taken one tablespoon of ginger powder, which is also called sungta, or you could use fresh grated ginger. This is half a teaspoon of clove powder, half a teaspoon of red chili powder, half a teaspoon of cinnamon powder, one fourth teaspoon of pepper powder, one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg or zaifar, and a pinch of salt. So I leave all the instructions as well as the method uh, and the ingredients in my description box below as to how I, uh, you know, made all these powders. Now, uh, in a bowl, I'm going to take half a cup of butter. And I'm going to add one third cup of powdered sugar and mix this for about five minutes till it becomes a very fine and smooth paste like this. Then I'm going to add one fourth cup of unsweetened cocoa powder and whisk everything well. One fourth cup of pancake syrup or you could also use honey or maple syrup. Whisk everything in really well. Then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla essence. Then I'm going to add all these spices as well as the salt. We're going to add one half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, two tablespoons of milk, whisk everything well. And now we're going to add one and a half cup of plain flour. And we're going to mix all of this together and then knead it to form a nice firm cookie dough. Now once our dough is ready, we're going to just cover it and set it aside for about an hour in the refrigerator. Now after an hour, I'm, I'm going to preheat my oven to 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. I'm going to line my baking tray with some baking paper and make small balls using a tablespoon like this so you get even sized balls. And then just roll them out evenly and place them at, an, you know, at a little bit of uh, distance from each one because they do uh, you know, nicely puff up after baking. And now I'm just going to bake them at 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then just to add a little bit of a nice Christmassy touch, I'm just going to add some powdered sugar. And that's it friends, your lovely chocolate ginger cookies are all ready.
So for today's Nyori's recipe, I've taken one cup of plain flour or maida. This is one fourth cup of fine rava or semolina. One fourth cup of melted ghee or clarified butter. Salt to taste. And approximately one fourth cup of water. Now I'm going to add the flour as well as the rava or the semolina to a bowl. Add some salt to taste and mix the three well. Now, if you don't have fine semolina, just grind the rough, uh, the medium semolina in your big support. Now, I'm going to add seven teaspoons of hot ghee to this, and I'm going to crumble this mixture with my fingers till it starts to resemble breadcrumbs. So, you should be able to hold the mixture like this. That means the ghee has nicely coated the flour, and now we're just going to add very little water at a time and just mix everything. We don't want a very soggy dough and we don't want a very dry dough. So just add a little water at a time. Mix all the dough really well. And now we're going to knead the dough for at least a whole minute. Till the dough doesn't stick to your hands anymore. So just keep kneading it. This is very important that you knead the dough well because we want a very flexible dough and you know it shouldn't stick to your fingers or your hands as you're kneading it. So I'm going to add a few drops of the ghee again and I'm just going to again knead it really really well. So a whole minute at least you need to knead this dough. Now I'll show you a closer look of how the dough should be. It, if you poke your fingers or you press your fingers down on the dough, it should make a mark on the dough and it shouldn't bounce back like you would with a pizza dough. And now we're going to rest this dough for about two to three hours, which is also very important. Now we're going to start working on the filling. So here I've taken four cardamoms or elaichis. I'm just going to peel them. And then in my mortar and pestle, I'm just going to grind them to a very, very fine powder. Now, if you're using ready-made uh, powder, you need about approximately one teaspoon. This really elevates the flavor of the filling. So once this is done, just set it aside. Now I'm going to roughly chop up some cashew nuts and some raisins, which are also called kishmish. We're just going to chop them up roughly. You could also add almonds. And we're going to set this aside. Now I'm going to use one cup of desiccated coconut, one cup of powdered sugar, one tablespoon of poppy seeds or khaskas. This is the same elaichi powder that we just finely ground and the uh, chopped cashew nuts and raisins. So this is going to be our filling. So first I'm going to dry roast the desiccated coconut on a very very low flame continuously stirring it till you get a very light brown color and you get this lovely aroma of the coconut. Now once that is done you're going to transfer this to a bowl. Now wipe your pan clean and again you're going to roast the poppy seeds for very little just about half a minute and then you're going to transfer that to to the bowl in which we have transferred the coconut. So this doesn't have to be fried or roasted very long, just a little bit and transfer it to the bowl. Again, wipe your uh, pan and now we're going to dry roast the cashew nuts and the raisins and again transfer that to, to the bowl. So now we finish with roasting. Now we're just going to add the cardamom powder that we ground and we're going to give this a good mix. And now I'm going to add the powdered sugar and mix all of this really, really well. Now I'm going to transfer this mixture back to the pan on a very low flame and I'm going to come roast this till the sugar starts to melt and you get, you know, a little bit of a light brown kind of a filling. So this should take you about half a minute or so. And even the color of the filling will become a little light golden brown and you'll get this beautiful aroma of the coconut. So set this aside and now we'll, uh, you know, start on the dough. So I'm going to make small balls like this, which have to be really smooth without any cracks in them. And then I'm just going to roll out uh, the ball like this. You're not going to add any flour to our rolling board because our dough is so easy to work with. You should be able to lift this once you have rolled it out like this. Now I'm just going to take a teaspoon uh, of the filling. 
don't take too much of the filling or don't take too less also about a teaspoon should do and then just dab some water on you know half of the circle just put all the filling together in the center and then just fold one side onto the other like this now you've got to seal the edges really really well this is very very important because if you don't do that then when you go to deep fry these in your they're just going to crack open and all the filling is going to go into the oil and it's going to be a real fiasco and then just cut off the edges like this if you don't have a cutter like this you can just use a pizza cutter or regular knife and then just dab this uh, design down that's also optional and then you get this beautiful nori so this is one way of doing it i'll just show you a few more designs so this is the same design i'm just showing it to you again now if you don't have this kind of a cutter you can also make a design with a fork by just pressing down the fork on you know once you have cut off the extra edges and then this is another design where uh, I'll just show it to you. So once you've done this part, then you just pick, fold, pick, fold, pick, fold to one side and pick, fold, pick, fold to the other side and you get this kind of a design. And then there's one design where you don't cut off the excess, you just dab down the wheel of the cutter and then just make a rough kind of a design if you don't want to cut off the excess and you like the crispy ends. And one is where you just cut off the excess and just leave it at that without making any other designs. So there are lots and lots of ways of, uh, you know, making these nuris. Each family definitely has their own special way of making it. So that's it. And then uh, once all your nuris are done, you're just going to heat up your oil. Now you can just put a ball of the dough into the oil to test if the oil is ready and once the oil comes up like this and turns brown you know your oil is all ready so you just put the nuris into the pan don't overcrowd the pan and then just fry, fry them till they're nice and golden brown in color and uh, drain off the excess oil onto some kitchen napkins and that's it friends your nuris are all ready to enjoy they're really crispy and crunchy and uh, the filling also is really yummy so i hope you give this recipe a try today's recipe as well as today's video and if you would like to see more videos like this then don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up also by, by clicking the thumbs up icon also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and become a part of Akshita's recipes once you have subscribed there is a small little bell icon that will pop up so just click on that that way whenever I put up a new recipe or a new video you'll get a message for the same so on that note, I'll say bye and I'll catch you in my next video sooner than you think. This is Akshita saying bye, take care, stay healthy, stay fit, be kind and loving to one another. So till we meet again, bye.